Ladies and gentlemen, we have now taken a look at what transistors are and how they work on the inside. So now, let's move on to the fun part, actually using a transistor in a circuit. You're watching episode 2 of the Transistor series. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. Today, we're going to take a look at well, transistors themselves, how we actually use them in a physical circuit. And well, at the end, I have a bunch of transistors, I have a breadboard. Let's actually put it to use. Let's actually build our own transistor-based circuit. Of course, just like your labs in school, before we can actually, you know, go to our practical and build the real thing, we're going to have to look at a little bit of theory first. And luckily, we have a very good tool that can help us simulate how transistors work in the real world, and that tool is called Logisip. Essentially, we'll use that to set up some circuits and explain how they work. We're going to spend a little bit of time looking at things like pull up and pull down resistors, for example, and just to see you know, the general flow of currents from one point to another. So do bear with me, right? The theory will come very much in useful. Let's take a look. Welcome to Logisip. So this is the interface you will be greeted with. And essentially, if we want to play with transistors, they are down here under wiring. In fact, it's right here. This is a transistor. I'm going to go ahead and place a transistor here and set it to N-type. So this is actually the NPN kind of transistor. We'll start with this, then we'll move on to the PNP. Here's what the legs here actually mean. This is the collector, this is the emitter, and this is the base. So what we can do is we can start to supply our inputs one for the collector, another for the base, and yeah, basically we can now operate our transistor. Let's put another, you know, just output here so we can see what comes out. Now let's turn our input on and basically, well, what comes out here at the output is dependent on, well, what we set at the base. So this is our n-type transistor, I'm going to just move it here and basically do the same for a p-type. Notice how the symbols are different by the way. The n-type just looks like this, but the p-type actually has, well, a little circle here, which of course in logic gate terms implies a negation. Of course, in this case, the input still comes in on the left and flows to the right, and what this means is for the p-type, the emitter is on the left, the collector is on the right. In the context of a Logisim simulation, well, we use the arrow to decide how the current actually flows instead, which, well, for all intents and purposes, is more convenient. Of course, if we were to switch the input on again, notice that it goes out by default. And when we actually set the input to high, well, the input no longer goes through. So yeah, basically, we can see how an N-type and a P-type are basically opposites of each other. Now, you may notice one thing, and that is, when we actually disallow the input to go towards the output, you don't get zero. You get this blue thing called X. Now, this is quite important because this technically isn't zero. This is called floating. And the idea is, in electronics, if you have a pin that is, well, not connected to either ground or high, its value is technically undefined. In fact, if you are using something like an Arduino and you try to read from a pin that is not connected, what you'll get is not zero. What you get is actually some fluctuating values, and that's because it's actually susceptible to noise from the environment. So what we want to do is we want to actually pull it to a particular value when it's in its disconnected state. To do that, we want to use what is known as a pull resistor, like this. Here's the idea. If we have a floating line like this, we can connect it to a pull resistor and its value gets pulled to that value. However, when we actually flip the switch, well, its value gets overridden and is replaced with, well, the actual value coming through. Essentially what this means is your pull resistor will only take effect if the line was supposed to be disconnected otherwise. In all other cases, the actual value takes precedence. If we pull towards zero, this is called a pull down resistor. We can also grab another resistor here, 
and we basically set it to pull towards one instead. And what that means is this is now what we call a pull up resistor. And the idea is if the line is disconnected, it goes towards one or high. Here's an easy way to actually visualize how this works. Now, if I were to switch this off, essentially, now this output is connected weakly to ground because it's connected through a resistor. However, when we switch this on, you can think of it as being connected strongly towards our one, our high. Since of course, this is basically a direct connection. There is no resistor and therefore this takes precedence. The same idea applies for pulling up Again, this output is connected weakly to the high state through a resistor. If a zero comes along, it's much closer to that, so that takes precedence. That's basically the idea, that's basically the easiest way to visualize this. Usually, when using a pull up or a down resistor, the actual resistance that we choose here should be quite high. And the reason why we want to do that is so that, you know, when this actually does go high, we don't want to create a short circuit type situation. Now, usually when we draw out our circuits, we prefer to do it in this manner. That is, we like to have our you know, power or our high state at the top, right? So that's what this symbol represents here. It is our power. And basically, we want it to go downwards towards ground. Our transistor sits here in the middle. And yeah, basically we can switch it like so. Of course, we want it to go to ground through our pull down resistor and therefore we make this connection. And basically, yeah, this is our, you know, simplest NPN transistor setup. Now in this vertical fashion, we can easily do the same for a pull up resistor as in this case, though I think this setup is quite interesting because essentially now our input is low. This is not really a case we've looked at a lot, but it still makes sense at the end of the day because, well, the difference on the output here is that it is either directly connected to ground as it is in this case, or it is disconnected. If we were to actually pull this up to high, this is how we can get our two distinct states. When our switch is closed, so to speak, we have our output connected directly to ground. However, when that connection is actually open, our pull-up resistor will pull the output to 1. So again, we've normally only talked about, you know, the inputs to our transistor being high, but we can easily use it this way as well. Since this is a PNP transistor, essentially our emitter is our input. And yeah, this is fine, as long as we're not trying to use our emitter as an output with our collector driven high. Alright, with that out of the way, we can finally go down to the fun stuff. Essentially what I have are a couple of NPN transistors right here and I'm just going to lay it out on a breadboard to build a very simple switchable circuit. Alright, so let's get started. Now, I have two transistors here, an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. And slightly off frame here, you know, what's there to help me is a resistor and an LED. I also have my breadboard hooked up to power, it's just two AAA batteries Right, very, very low voltage, which is why I can just, you know, plug in my LED here and it will light up. And yeah, essentially, we're going to be using the LED later on to indicate the status of the output. So let's start with the NPN transistor. The part number of this is the PN2222A. And basically, according to the data sheet, the leftmost pin, at least in this particular orientation, is the emitter, which is why we're going to have to actually turn this around before plugging this into our breadboard. Essentially, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start making my connections. So first, I'm going to use a jumper wire to take positive and bring it to our collector. So essentially, now the entire column here is now connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And yeah, that means my collector is connected properly. Now, from the emitter, I'm going to connect my LED since it's going to be positive coming out, right? So the positive leg goes towards the emitter, like so. Of course, I will need to complete the circuit, which is why the negative terminal goes back to the negative side of the battery, like so. So what's left is to handle the base. 
So I'm going to use a resistor here just to limit the current going towards the base, right? And I'm going to basically hook it up to the other side of the breadboard. And finally, I can introduce our last wire here. I'm going to basically tap out from the positive side of the battery. And when I actually make the connection to the base, the LED lights up. There you go. It's as simple as that. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this off. Basically, I'm going to remove the NPN transistor now and try the same with our PNP transistor instead. Now, this part is the PN2907A and its pinout is exactly the same. The leftmost pin in this orientation is the emitter. However, now we don't have to flip it around because when it comes to a PNP transistor, the emitter is where the current goes in. So basically, I'm going to put it on the breadboard in the exact same position as the previous transistor. But now I've basically rotated it around so that the emitter is on the left. The base is connected at the same place, but in order to switch on my LED now, I don't connect this to the positive side. Instead, I pull it out and put it to the negative side instead. Again, when this is connected, the LED lights up. That's basically the idea. Now, what we've seen here is a very basic implementation of our transistors. In a more fancy situation, we will want to use something like a switch. That will basically look something like this, right? Don't worry too much about the connections I'm making. Basically, I have a switch here. So of course, now this wire that goes from the negative side will go towards one of the prongs of the switch. There, wrong row, there we go. And now, all we have to do is to extract that output and put it towards our base. Now when we press down, the LED lights up. That's basically as simple as it gets. So we haven't yet had a chance to see our pull up and down resistors in action. So let's tweak our setup a little bit and try and see how this works. What I'm trying to build here is that last diagram that we have seen in our simulation. So I have a PNP transistor that is connected to the negative terminal on the emitter side. I have an LED here that has its negative side already connected to the negative terminal and a positive side just sitting here. I also have a resistor that is pulling up to ground even though it's not really pulling anything at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a jumper cable to connect my pull-up resistor to my LED. That causes it to switch on immediately. Now, I'm also going to use an additional cable to again connect this line to the output of my transistor. Off it goes over here to the collector end. Now, the LED is still lit, but if I were to press the button down now, the LED goes off. Alright, so that is essentially our pull-up in action. If I were to disconnect this pull-up altogether, then we will just get no output because in one stage it's connected to ground, in the other it is simply an open circuit. So again, the LED won't light up under those conditions. Now just for interest's sake, one additional change has actually been made here, and that is I've actually taken out the resistor at the base. The reason why we need to do this is basically, well, the whole concept of pulling up or down is a resistance game. The side with less resistance will win over. So, well, by making sure that we have a pretty strong current over here, we allow that to take precedence. So yeah, again, this particular bit of knowledge would be important if we're trying to use our transistor as an amplifier, but since we're only using it as a switch, we're not going to go into too much detail in that regard. So there you go, we have now seen the basics of transistors, we have now used the transistor in a circuit. Finally, from the next episode onwards, we can start actually building logic gates using our transistors. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.